Hello everyone, my name's Cliff and welcome back to my channel. This is Cliff's Dark Gems. And if you're new here, welcome. Hope you enjoy yourselves. Um, today we're going to be doing a February wrap-up. As well as a little bit of an intermission with our fur baby, Layla. Stay tuned. Okay, before we begin, I'm busy with two books at the moment, and that is first of all, Tales of Sex and Death, Scared Stuff by Ramsey Campbell. As you can see, I've just started the first short story, and I'm also busy with One Blood by Pauline Hopkins, and this was for uh, Rogers Cheapel Book Club at Michael K. Vaughan's Discord. I say better late than never, uh, the last day of February. Um, I don't think it's such a long book, so let's hope I finish it either at 12 tonight or first thing tomorrow morning, uh, and then I kind of say that I've made it. Uh, but yeah, those are the two books I'm reading at the moment. I've read 10 books this month, including two graphic novels. Um, I didn't get as far as I was hoping. I had uh, something like 16 books on my TBR last month. But you know what, uh, as I stated at the beginning of the year, uh, I'm going to have a good time this year, uh, low stress, I can enjoy myself. And if it means I don't get to every book in my TBR, that's okay. I'm at peace with that. Uh, as long as I'm reading what I want to read, as long as I'm enjoying myself, uh, as long as I'm making friends and just doing my thing. Uh, so yeah. Okay, another important thing before we go on, as you can see on my left here, uh, it's my Read What You Own Challenge chart, and I've got to 46 books, um, so it's been kind of slow going, and what I said on a previous video is that once I get to 50, I'm going to treat myself to a book haul, um, it's kind of getting frustrating. One of the things that I take a lot of delight in is buying second hand books. My wife and I don't spend a lot of money besides groceries and bills. We don't go out shopping, clubbing, or going to pubs. We don't buy stuff that we don't need. Um, so book buying for me is just kind of the only thing that I do and that I treasure and I enjoy. So this challenge has been a little bit hard on me. Um, so I'm definitely going to buy some books on my Kindle and physical books. And then I'm not going to buy anything until I get to 100. Uh, and that's a promise. Um, but I'm definitely going to go on a nice big book binging shopping spree when I get to 50, and that should be next month, because I've only got four left to go. Okay, finally I've, I've spoken about most of these books already. I've actually given kind of mini reviews for all of them, except for one and two. Um, so I'm not going to spend lots of time on each book. And let's start, start with uh, Sherlock Holmes, A Study in Scarlet. Uh, now this is by Arthur Conan Doyle. It's not even shown on the cover, so I struggled with that last time, um, but I really enjoyed this. Uh, I kind of decided to pick this up because of one of the book events, and I think that was Holmes is where the heart is. And of course I didn't take part fully in the event, but I decided to pick up a Sherlock Holmes as a kind of thing. I was kind of intrigued, I was curious as to how much I would enjoy it. And for this particular book I was pleasantly surprised. It's the first book, uh, first book of Sherlock Holmes, so you're introduced to the character as well as to Dr. Watson, Watson, and they're such interesting characters, and there's kind of a mystery surrounding Sherlock Holmes that I really enjoyed, um, and his powers of deduction, and there's a murder, and it seems like almost impossible to solve, uh, but Sherlock Holmes is two steps, three steps ahead of everyone else, um, he's just got these almost superhuman powers of deduction uh, and yeah it was a lot of fun. I also enjoyed how the second half of the book kind of went back in time uh, so it was just just all in all a very fun read and I gave it four stars uh, probably four and a half rounded down but yeah I'm definitely going to read more from this author 
uh, a great murder mystery. Okay, next up I read Fahrenheit 451 by Brad Bradbury. Now I read this because I want to read some banned books this year. Uh, MJ started this awesome thing called uh, 24 in 24, reading 24, banned books in 24. That's a very important subject. Um, and this is a very important book. And I have spoken about it, but very basically, it's about a dystopian future where books are illegal. And if someone finds you having books, these firemen come around to your place not to put out fires, but to burn your books. And if you don't leave, they're going to burn you with them. Um, so it's a really messed up society. And I had a lot of fun with this book. I didn't enjoy it. I did not enjoy it quite as much as I do some of his other books. Uh, um, they're a lot more kind of science fiction, fantasy, horror sort of books. This is a little bit more dry, uh, but still a fantastic story. And as, as I said in my review, it's a very important story. And I think it's very important we, as readers, take notes and read and think about banned books and why people are doing things like this, challenging, banning books. And it's kind of ironic because for this particular book, um, it's banned because of bad language. <laughs> bad language and also mention of drugs, which I actually don't remember at all. It's kind of, kind of really ridiculous, stupid. Um, so people come up with the weirdest ways to try and challenge books. And this is an important book. And it's kind of terrifying when we think about our society today with technology, with the internet, and with what's happening, and the woke culture, and I don't know. It's just an important book to read and think about. And that is Fahrenheit 451. Okay, next up, I read the sequel to The Black Farm uh, by Elias Witherow called Return to the Black Farm. And this was a buddy read with my friend, my awesome friend, Bad, from Bad is Rad 2. And yeah, I enjoyed this book. Uh, not nearly as much as the first one, I'm afraid. Um, just the world building and the imaginative kind of... <laughs> this world of the black farm. Very depraved, very sick. Not for everyone. But that world building just did not seem present in this book. Um, it's far more character focused, character driven. I'm not going to say much about it because if you haven't read the first one, you need to go back there. But yeah, that world building aspect seemed lacking. There's a lot of kind of a journey, almost like a quest aspect, where these characters, yeah, go and try and get something done. And I've got to say, it's not as terrifying in terms of uh, triggers. It's not as disturbing and graphic as the first novel, but there is one scene that triggered me and really messed me up. And I don't know how much I enjoyed it. I don't like it. Uh, I got through it because it was painfully. But luckily it was short. But it involves a young child. What this young child has to endure is it's just horrible. Um, so that's all I'm going to say about that. That's a good story. I enjoyed it. But it dragged in places. And it wasn't nearly as good as the original in my opinion. So yeah, that's Return to the Black Farm. Okay, next up we have End of Watch by Stephen King. Now, I'm reading this and a whole lot of novels in order with the character Holly from Stephen King up until we read the novel Holly. Uh, and this is all about Holly, group read -a uh, group read. And this is the final book in the Bull Hodges trilogy, which I really enjoyed. In fact, out of uh, all three books, Mr. Mercedes, I can't remember what the second one was, and then this one, End of Watch. I think I enjoyed this the most, uh, mainly because it's the most original, most interesting, has a little bit of like a supernatural thing to it, but also just the whole idea of this absolutely terrifying villain, a horrible, horrible villain, and what he's doing um, just was very engaging and interesting. However, and this has been mentioned in another video. Um, and there are trigger warnings for teenage suicide in this book. And as an ex-teacher, I found some of the reading very difficult. Um, and go into that and just be warned that that is happening in this book. 
Um, yeah, I, well, look, I'm not going to say much more about it. I think what you should do if you want to find more about this book and other books is I think you need to go to Greg's channel at another Bibliophile Reads. I'll link it down below. And all the videos we've done on the Bill Hodges tril Trilogy are there. Um, there's another video happening tomorrow night. Unfortunately, I cannot be there because I have to go back home for the weekend. We have to fly back so for the long weekend, so I'm missing out on that. Um, but yeah, do yourselves a favor. Tune in to uh, another Bibliophile Reads and find out more about The End of Watch by Stephen King. Okay, next up we have a Kindle read, uh, In the Scrape. By, it's co-authored by James Newman and I think it's Marnie Steerslunt, Steerslunt, something like that. This is an awesome little book. Uh, I gave it four stars because in some places I was like, uh. But it's about two young boys and they're trying to escape from their abusive father. He's a really messed up, screwed up character. Couldn't stand him. And yeah, they're trying to um, make enough money, whether it's through a little bit of theft or selling stuff. Or, but they're desperate to get away from their father. And they come up with a plan on a hunting trip um, to run away. Because they need to join their mother, who is uh, apparently abandoned them. And they want to run away from their father. Um, and it, it's very tense, it's very suspenseful, it's kind of a gripping novel, quite dark in places, especially with the whole abuse thing. And the last half of the book uh, was a lot of fun, it's a lot of twists and turns that I did not expect, I did not see coming. And uh, yeah, it was kind of exciting. And all in all, I gave it four out of five again. Um, there was just something lacking for me, I don't know what it was, the writing was, writing was awesome. Uh, but maybe the end was fun, but I just expected something a little bit more. There was something just not quite there. Maybe in terms of the characters, maybe in terms of how the story kind of panned out in the second half with the twists. It's almost like a little bit too much and unrealistic or I don't know what it was. I still gave it 4 out of 5. So that is In the Scrap by James Newman and I think it's Marnie or Maria, I can't remember. Gentlemen, but you'll see it up there. Okay, everyone, before we continue, we're just going to have a short break. Not an ad break, YouTube does that. Uh, we're going to have a short Layla interlude. Enjoy. Okay everyone, the sixth book I read was Walkers by Graham Masterton. You've got to love that color cover. And now, really, this was just a batshit crazy, gory, crazy ride. And I've talked about it already. Very briefly, a father <laughs> has a little accident in the wood. He discovers this building um, that he feels has got a lot of potential. And he wants to change it into 
almost like an estate, a luxury estate with people to stay in. He's got all these ideas, but what he doesn't realize is that it's actually a lunatic asylum um, where all the patients disappeared, I think, 60 years ago. And anyway, while he's discovering this and while he's exploring it, one, one night with his son, uh, his son gets pulled into the walls because the lunatics discovered a magic to escape into the walls. A uh, very weird kind of druidic, druid, druid thing into the walls. And they pull the son in there and they tell the dad, the head lunatic tells the dad, unless you free us, your son will die. Now, this book is just bonkers. Um, there are some very <laughs> graphic kills and the plot is kind of a little bit ludicrous. You need to have a sort of suspension of disbelief uh, throughout the book. Um, and sometimes I find myself raising my eyebrow going, hmm, what am I actually reading here? Uh, but it's still a lot of fun and it's imaginative and it goes all over the place and I had a lot of fun and I enjoyed it and I enjoyed the ending, it was kind of insane but yeah, I really enjoyed this book and that is Walkers by Graham Masterton Okay, right, next I read Life, the Universe and Everything This was my palette cleanser I also found it in this four, four volumes in one This one is actually part three and yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, five stars for me. All of them are five stars. Uh, it's not as good as the other ones. Uh, it's just something, maybe it's not quite as imaginative all over the place. Like, I, I really enjoyed the first two. But it's still wacky and wild. And I enjoy this. It's kind of a science fiction, fantasy, uh, humor, masterpiece. Uh, wacky humor. Um, and do yourself a favor. If you've ever seen the movie, by the way. Compared to the book, it's absolutely crap. Kind of okay, but the book is just so much better, and I wish they had done a better job with the movie. To be honest, that's just my opinion. Um, but yeah, that is life, the universe, and everything. Okay, next up we've got Stirring the Sheets by Chad Lutsky. And this is my third five-star read in a row by this author. All completely different novels, novellas. Um, and it's just such a spectacular uh, author and this book it's a, a grief horror uh, it's very sad very moving but he just deals with that subject so well and it's about an elderly man uh, who's lost his wife a year ago in a terrifying car crash she burned to death and he can't get over it he's still grieving he's still leaving her side of the bed untouched the sheets and all, everything, he won't go there, he cannot move on, his neighbours worried about him, and it's just a sad, moving, kind of, uh, kind of sad, sad novel, novella, um, but just the way that this man writes, um, and then he basically, because he works at a funeral home, uh, he prepares the corpses, which is done in a lot of details, so it's kind of macabre, but he sees a corpse that reminds him of his wife when she, she was younger and against his better judgment he takes the corpse home with him um, he just, yeah, um, it sounds like a dreadful macabre kind of story but just Chad Lutsky is such a skillful writer, a storyteller that it comes across as beautiful uh, and there's almost a sense underlying of optimism in a story it's just a gorgeous novella um, and not what you think it would be. Um, perhaps in the hands of a different author, this kind of topic would go in a different direction. But it is about loneliness. It's about sadness. And it's about the inability to let go from our grief, from the loss of a loved one. Um, and it's just, as I said, it is beautifully written. This is an awesome, beautiful uh, author. And I'm going to read everything by him. He's that good. Uh, so yeah, do yourselves a favor. Pick up anything by Chad Lutsky. Okay, everyone, just to finish off two graphic novels that I reread in February. And the first being one that is utterly depraved and sick. I'm sorry. And that is Age of, Devi uh, Age of Desire by Clive Barker, uh, based on one of his books of blood. And it's about an illegal experimental 
aphrodisiac drug uh, that is applied to this man, this guinea pig, and it drives him absolutely insanely wild with lust. It takes lust takes over his entire body. He's on flame. It's on fire, and it goes to some very sick places. Um, and just all I can say about this, I mean, it's beautifully illustrated, if you like that kind of thing. <laughs> and all I can say about this is that it goes to places that are very dark. Um, and, yeah, trigger warnings for rape, animal torture and violence, and death, and rape of all kinds of different types of rape. I know that you just have no idea what's coming. Really, it's just twisted. But it's still very entertaining if you like Clive Barker and you like your horror sometimes a little bit darker. Then give Age of Desire a go. Okay, and finally, uh, Dark Tower, The Gunslinger, The Little Sisters of Illyria. Probably my favourite graphic novel. Uh, uh, one of my favourite novels from... Uh, uh, sorry, one of my favourite short stories from Stephen King. Um, the Little Sisters of Illyria in Everything is Eventual and it's just a wonderful accompaniment to the whole Dark Tower universe um, and uh, sort of journey of Roland when he was younger and he comes across these yeah I'm not going to say anything more about the, I'm not going to say anything about the story I don't want to spoil it um, but yeah he comes across these mutant characters he's apparently saved by these women uh, and taken to this hospital tent. I wouldn't call it a hospital tent, but whatever. And yeah, um, it is terrifying. Um, it's wonderfully, wonderfully illustrated. I have spoken about it before, so I don't know why I'm speaking about it again, but it's a wonderful story, and this is, yeah, one of my favorite graphic novels. Uh, so that is The Little Sisters of Illyria. Okay, everyone, so that's my video for today. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you did, please be sure to give me a thumbs up, to like, and to subscribe uh, the whole way through my video. You can see that little thing in the bottom corner. Subscribe to my channel for more content. Um, and in the meantime, take care of yourselves. Uh, give a comment down below. What do you think of those books? Uh, did your opinion differ? Uh, what do you What did you read in February? Uh, what are you reading in March? Just let me know how you are down in the comments. Um, and yeah, until next time, take care of yourselves. Keep those pages turning and cheers.